The following content is provided under a Creative Commons license. Your support will help MIT OpenCourseWare continue to offer high-quality educational resources for free. To make a donation or view additional materials from hundreds of MIT courses, visit MIT OpenCourseWare at ocw.mit.edu. Okay, uh, let's get uh, started. A uh, brief uh, recap uh, what we were talking in the last lecture. Uh, we uh, uh, emphasized the density of states, which is a measure of how many quantum states, either per frequency interval, or per energy interval, or per wave vector magnitude interval, wavelength interval. That's your choice. And uh, it's really a mathematics. When I want to find some quantity f uh, over all uh, the possible k sets of combination kx, ky, kz, each set of this combination gives me one quantum state. If I include in this p polarization or spin as my additional, say, uh, uh, polarization, in general I call this polarization, right? So when I do this summation, I'm summing. Uh, all the quantum states, and uh, when this function does not vary rapidly over two adjacent points of this k, I can convert this summation into integration. So uh, the density of state is really a uh, mathematical convenience, and, uh, uh, but it's, uh, it's uh, so widely used, a very, uh, very powerful tool so uh, many you know, times uh, we talk about just uh, people will say, what's the DOS? I mean, you calculate uh, the density of states of different material systems. And later on, I hope we'll say some of this uh, when we do the, uh, say, uh, computer. We'll look at the, uh, what people are plotting, right? And then uh, we used simple relations. So, so it depends on this function. Is this function a function of E, a function of K? So you decide whether which one is the most convenient for you, whether you convert this into E or K integration. And uh, uh, there is a relation. So to do that conversion from K into E, uh, the relation between the energy and the wave vector for electron, we use a simple parabolic band. And for photon, photon is a linear dispersion that we use with that. Uh, we uh, did our math and say what's the corresponding density of states. So that's uh, uh, the, uh, the emphasize. We spend the most of time there. And also, we give example if you have quantization, right? The separation of energy level, let's say in the z direction, becomes very large. I cannot convert this summation into integration anymore. I'll keep that sum, but I, I still do in the xy direction. I still can convert that into uh, integration. So we show the difference in the density of states of a 2D quantum well uh, versus a bulk, uh, uh, say, parabolic band material. <coughs> and uh, at the end of the last lecture, uh, we moved on to talk about uh, Fermi Dirac, Fermi Dirac distribution. Um, uh, this is a now I have quantized energy levels. Uh, starting from, uh, uh, if you recall, in the first chapter, we introduced the Boltzmann factor, the probability of a molecule having certain energy. And now uh, we expanded that. We say this is the Gibbs factor. That's the probability of a quantum state, say, being occupied, uh, say, say, with energy E and uh, with the number of particle n. So it's an open system. Right? at a constant temperature, and mu is the chemical potential. That's the energy uh, the, uh, that it takes uh, to take out or put in a particle at that energy, uh, say, uh, uh, into the system, the average energy. So uh, chemical potential is the driving force for mass diffusion. right? Temperature is the driving force for heat transfer, and pressure is the driving force uh, for the volume change. Those are the thermodynamic quantities. And uh, uh, we asked the question, so when we apply this, 
uh, we need to find the normalization factor A, because the probability of adding up all possible possibilities should give me 1. So when I apply this to one quantum state of electron, a charge, so it's a fermion, right? And this quantum state is in thermal equilibrium with the surrounding. So in that quantum state, right, the electron can get in, get out. It's an open system. And there's a constant temperature uh, communication with the surrounding electrons. And uh, uh, if I apply the uh, um, uh, probability summation, I find the normalization factor. And eventually, I find the average, average number of electrons in that quantum state EI is the Fermi Dirac distribution, EI minus mu over KBT exponential plus 1. That's the, uh, uh, the, uh, what we ended uh, last lecture. Right. And uh, I will continue. So this is for uh, uh, fermion, right? Fermi Dirac fermion. And uh, in one quantum state, I can have empty, no particle there, no electron there, or I can have maximum one, right? So those are the so that summation is easy to do. And now let me extend that to a boson. So with that, I will say if it's a boson, it's a boson-Einstein distribution. <coughs> and uh, uh, again, I consider a quantum state with the energy, say, this quantum state that energy EI, right? And uh, a boson, a quantum for boson, one quantum state can have zero to infinite possibilities, right? It's not the fermion, the Pauli exclusion principle. So uh, I can have the number of particles could be uh, zero, or one, two, right? So all at its end. We we'll have zero. The total energy of the system is zero. We we'll have one. That's a EI. Uh, EI. And then when I have two particles, that's two EI. That's the total energy of the system, right? Of this specific energy level, I treat it as a system. OK? And again, then I go to the Gibbs factor. I say the probability of this quantum state having a particle between 0 to infinite so it has to sum up equal to 1. So I sum this up. N, uh, that's a small n, right? Uh, capital N, n to 0 to infinite, that's the E R uh, A exponential mass E. So that depends on if I have an n particle, I should have n times E I, that's the energy. And uh, uh, the, then I have uh, n times mu divided by kBT that equals 1, right? So now you take out this n, you say EI minus mu, that factor is a common factor, and uh, it's a geometric series, right? So if I do my summation for this geometric series, I get a 1 mass exponential mass EI minus mu kBT equals uh, 1, OK? Right, so this is the, uh, the summation of the geometric series. And then I have A equals 1 mass exponential mass EI mass mu kBT. So this gives me the normalization factor A. And then with this, I have the probability of this state uh, what's the probability of this state having n particles? Uh, uh, see, I can write it down. And again, I can go to find the average number of particles, right? So the average number of particle, I use the F again. This is for this energy level. And I uh, say temperature and the chemical potential mu for the whole system. That's the average number of particles. 
and that should equal to the probability. So is n p uh, e uh, whether we have here uh, e and the n and uh, n equals this n equals zero to infinite, right? So I'm finding the average. So this is when they uh, say I average over this n over the probability I just derived with the normalization factor, right? So if you sum this up, you put in the n equals 0 to infinite. And this is the n. This is my normalization is 1 mass exponential mass ei mass mu kbt and uh, times, uh, say, exponential. That's uh, the, uh, uh, again, say, n ei minus n times mu kbt. And that's the summation. I should do. OK? Sum over all those n. Uh, well, uh, uh, there is a small, little, a small mathematic trick. Uh, because n is here, n is here. Right? It's not a simple geometric series. And this mathematical trick is uh, if, you, uh, if you take this function here right, and uh, you do a derivative with respect to the ei minus mu, you get an n in the front. Right? If, you, if you think of this as my x, that's the so is e minus n times x. And you take a derivative, if you see that's my function, I take the derivative of that function, that n will come to the front. So with that, you can do this summation. I'm not going into the detail. You can read the book. And I'm going to give you the final result of this exercise. We'll give you uh, ei and uh, t mu, the average number of particle for a boson in one quantum state in thermal equilibrium with the surrounding, right? This is the uh, EI minus mu KBT looks very similar. Before I had that for Fermi Dirac, I have plus one, now I have minus one. So mathematical turns out very beautiful. It's just uh, the difference between the two particles is one plus, one is minus. Okay, and this is the Bose-Einstein distribution. Bose-Einstein. And compared to Fermi-Dirac, if you say here, E i minus mu divided by kvt plus 1, right? And uh, because here is a plus 1, this is a numerator is 1, right? You say for n here is always between 0 and 1, right? But that's not the case for Bose-Einstein distribution, because this is a minus 1, right? So if we look at the typical, how it looks like, And uh, say for what, let's say the uh, uh, Fermi Dirac distribution, and the, uh, uh, because it's an exponential function, right? KBT. Remember, KBT at room temperature is 26 milli electron volt. Okay? And uh, if this one, EI mass mu, is much larger than KBT, this is very large. Is remember, say, if, uh, if this is a, a negative, that quickly can go to 0, right? So you plot it. Here is your mu. And for Fermi Dirac, it's 1. And uh, pretty much all the way, right, right, except the right into the E equals mu range, where so this is the E of the energy, so, uh, the energy level. And there's only around the mu kbt range, 3 kbt, and the rest of it is either 1 or 0. So uh, now if you 
uh, think about that when we discuss metal before, right? We say, okay, this is your EF. The, this is your uh, uh, Fermi level. And uh, Fermi level is actually very close to the chemical potential mu. I'll comment that later on. But see, right now, I just think this is a mu. Okay? And uh, in, you see only 3 kVT near that level you have. See, below this, you have some empty states. Normally, the field, right, right, at zero temperature, the field right to this level. But the long zero temperature, because of that from a direct distribution, there are few empty states below and few mobile electron above. Okay, so that's the, so even in metal, a lot of all electrons are moving, contributing and conduction. Only near this EF. So that's uh, uh, one. And now if you think about uh, the uh, Boson-Einstein distribution, what it look like is here is your mu, and here is your E, right? And uh, I cannot have my E less than mu. Otherwise, the average number of particles is negative, right? So when E I approach mu, this approach one, so that number could be really large, right? But E I is much larger than mu, this quickly drop. So this is my Bose-Einstein distribution. OK, so uh, you probably all heard Bose-Einstein condensate right? a few years ago. Uh, um, uh, physics department, Kettler, uh, got a Nobel Prize for the work in Bose-Einstein condensate. Right? What is it? So uh, if you look at this, when you go to very low temperature, right? this KBT is very small and 10 to the minus fifth Kelvin, OK? And then when this one gets to, uh, say, really close to mu, it turns out this number is uh, 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 it's getting really very large. The whole, uh, this goes very large. So there are mo what it means is that there is this uh, one energy state that all the particles fall into that energy state one quantum state, right? So they condense into that quantum state. That's the simple Bose-Einstein condensate. And the trick is you got to get that energy, uh, say, temperature really, really low. So it turns out that, that say, there was a, uh, 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 Einstein, this was predicted a very, very long time ago, but nobody were able to drive to that temperature. And in the physics department, uh, and Keller and a few others have been trying to drive this to very low temperature for many years by using various refrigeration technique. Okay, get to low temperature. And uh, uh, in fact, they were beaten. They didn't win. And they, it was uh, their student uh, and uh, went to NIST. Right now at the Colorado Boulder NIST, right? They thought about a way to do the Bose-Einstein condensate much easier. And the way they did it is to use the laser cooling. OK? Then why, why you can cool with laser, you typically think about the heating stuff, right? <coughs> and uh, uh, so when you have a laser beam coming in, and what it does is say, uh, is using this Doppler effect, that really uh, pretty much like using the momentum of the photons, and then when the electron, I say, when the molecule moves one direction, the photon just hit it, so it doesn't move. So pretty much like uh, make them stationary, and when they make it stationary, their their temperature is low. So with that, they can they, they did the cooling on a uh, say optical table, and got the Bose-Einstein condensate. So that the lower price was given three people, and two from NIST and one from physics. So they, the uh, Keller, they did a lot of, say, a beautiful experiment using that technique. Yes? So you're saying that the molecules obey the Bose-Einstein distribution? Uh, yeah. But don't they have the exclusion principle? No. Is it macroscopic 
uh, uh, they 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 uh, they do uh, well. Uh, it's not they have a, a net charge zero. A net is right. They don't have. They have positive and negative charge. Molecules of the of the And yeah. Can you clarify what the difference is between these two graphs, or what they're each plotting and receiving? Well, this is uh, the uh, let's say here is a Fermi Dirac. And here is a distribution for Bose-Einstein. Uh, Bo Bose-Einstein, right? That's the F, right? And uh, so you should go out and be the advisors. That's why. Uh, the uh, so that's the that's the one part, right? And. Uh, um, in fact, uh, this laser cooling, this is where Stephen Chu got the Nobel Prize, the current uh, DOE secretary. Right? It was, uh, he did this laser cooling experiment, and uh, he, he got the Nobel Prize on laser cooling. So before they gave the Bose-Einstein condensate Nobel Prize, they have to give the cooling Nobel Prize. You don't want to, if you happen to be escaped, <laughs> you goofed. Right, and uh, this is this uh, last year was a graphene, and between graphene and uh, there is another one, and uh, this is a uh, um, you see carbon sixty, uh, that was uh, to Richard Smalley, and uh, carbon sixty is a carbon the other form of carbon atoms arranging like a soccer ball, right, and uh, in the ninety one ninety three or uh, well, ninety one it was uh, say and you say Ijima. Uh, so he grew this nanotube, right? He didn't really grow, he just found it in the dust. And right? this was, say, carbon dust. I mean, he, he looked at the TM and he found these tubes. So that, that's pretty much like uh, you, another form of carbon, right? And so Japan, uh, I must say, people, a lot of people say they probably get low price. I actually wish they got low price. But uh, um, they skipped. You went to the graphene. You got a scotch tape. Scotch tape. That's easier, right? <laughs> anyway, um, so uh, first point, right? Uh, the uh, distribution. The second is what's the chemical potential for photon and phonon, right? And uh, typically. We say for photon of and same well, for photon, right? Uh, uh, the user argument is the camera potential is zero. Mu is zero. And the reason to argue that mu is zero is that uh, say it's not a conserved the particle, right? Photon, photon, you can disappear. Light get absorbed, that becomes uh, say uh, uh, say heat, uh, say get the whole photon, right? They they disappear. It's not that electron is a, is always somewhere. It went somewhere, but it doesn't get destroyed. So that's the argument. So that n you should not have a, say uh, because this is a changing, right? That mu is a zero. That's the argument for. Uh, typically, it's correct for thermal radiation or for thermal photons, right? Mu equals zero. But let's say uh, over the years, I've been uh, uh, actually asking this, struggling with this, uh, because uh, if you look at the, the electronic device, right? Uh, so optical electronic device, lasers and uh, LEDs. And what happens to the light emission in that case is the light is emitted, so you have conduction band, you have valence band, right? And uh, um, uh, say a light uh, electron goes from here to here will emit a photon. That's an emission, right? Light and uh, electron from high energy to lower energy, they could convert that into photon emission process. And uh, in laser and the LED, uh, it turns out the electron and the holes are not in equilibrium with each other. And the electron has a chemical potential, and holes has a chemical potential. 
And this is also called the quasi Fermi level. So E F, let's say, uh, and this is E F P, right? Each of them have an equivalent, their own, if you take them as a system, they have a chemical potential. And in this case, the photon immediate actually has a chemical potential mu. The mu equals the difference of EFN, EFP. So your distribution function is uh, here. You should write this EI is H nu, right, at a certain energy and mass mu. So, uh, so in fact, uh, photons can indeed have a chemical potential. And that's when they interact with other long equilibrium systems, like an electron. I'm not saying people discuss phonons, or nobody has really probably encountered that situation where phonons are emitted by, uh, let's say, if I, I can imagine if phonons, only phonons by emitted the same process by long equilibrium electron holes, I should write the same thing for phonon. Okay, but nobody has created a system like that. Uh, and uh, maybe some people talk of phonon lasers. That might be the, uh, that, that, that might be, you have to write that way. Okay, so those are the uh, statistical distribution for electrons and phonons. And uh, now I'm eager to use it. So what we have derived, if you think about this, is I solve Schrodinger equation, I know the energy level, I know the quantum state, right? And using density of states, I know near each energy level how many states it has. And now I know using the Bose-Einstein Fermi Dirac distribution, I know on each quantum state how many particles. This is either thermal or equilibrium, right? I'm not talking about long equilibrium case yet. So I can count the energy stored in the system, thermal energy stored in the system. Right? So let's do that. So let's look at the examples. My first example is photon. Black body radiation. Okay, let me say I have a, a, a cavity, right? Inside the cavity are photons in equilibrium with the surrounding at temperature T. This is actually if you go to read the Planck's book, you, it's very interesting. 1905, he discussed those. And uh, uh, photon itself, how could they reach an equilibrium? So you have to actually say, maybe there's some gas, very diluted atoms there, and they help you have that process. Right? But say, let's say I have a cavity with uh, the photons in equilibrium at the temperature T. Right? Then uh, what's the energy, total energy of these photons in the cavity, right? So the total energy is U in this cavity is, uh, of course, the polarization of light and Kx, Ky, Kz, right? That's the Kx, that's the mode, Ky, Kz, that's what we are doing in the we say we need to convert this summation into integration, right? Each set of kx, k by kz gives me one state, right? And each state, say one state, this state could have a frequency omega, right? The energy of that one photon is h omega, right? One photon. But say, on each state, how many photons I have is by the Bose-Einstein distribution. So this is the Bose-Einstein at the temperature T. So this is at the frequency energy. Energy is is H nu or uh, omega. Let me use omega, omega, and temperature T 
And I said it's a thermal radiation, black body, mu equals zero, so I don't carry mu. OK. So that's what I need to do, right? And uh, now I assume you know how to do it. Last lecture, we spent time converting the summation into integration. So I'm going to just write the integration. I'm going to use density of states. If you say at the beginning, we say it's converting the summation into density of states. I'm going to do the density of states in the omega frequency. right? So I'm going to write this is. Uh, it turns out the, the volume is here, because uh, say it depends on I, if I use the density of states per unit volume, then say uh, h bar omega f boson Einstein distribution times d omega and d omega. right? So I'm converting the summation into an integration. And uh, my photon frequency could be 0 to infinite. So this is my math there, OK? What do we get? Let's do a few more steps. You can go to check. So I could write the u divided by v is per unit volume. What's the energy density in terms of function for frequency omega? right? And uh, I have, if you check, uh, 0 to infinite h bar omega exponential h bar omega kBT minus 1. And uh, say density of states for photon, you can look at your notes, is omega square, the speed of lot cubic, and pi square, and d omega. Right? Uh, I should not for the omega here. This is the integration already. And what's inside is the function of omega. Right? This is the energy density per unit volume of those photons. And what you have, what you see inside is essentially is a black body, Planck's black body radiation law. It's very easy, right? Once you have what Planck is really say, you have to have that quantization to get this kind of distribution. And the rest is just the, I uh, say, each mode, how many photon times one energy of one photon times how many modes I have here. OK. And uh, so that's the, uh, uh, see, here what's inside is u omega. And normally, we do not write the Planck's law in terms of the energy density. We write the, say, emissive power or write it in terms of intensity, right? And uh, well, so here I have photons per unit volume. I know the energy of this photon. And those photons are moving to all directions, black body radiation, right, at the speed of light. So what the intensity is defined per unit direction, unit solid angle. What's the flux of energy? So intensity of light is per unit solid angle in space. This is basically per unit direction there. How much energy? And the total space solid angle is how much? 4 pi. That's the whole, right? In a, in a plan, there's 2 pi. In a sphere, it's 4 pi. So I have 4 pi, that's per unit solid angle, times u omega. So that's the total energy. And this energy is moving at the speed of light. That gives me the intensity. OK? And uh, if you go to a book, you normally don't write into omega. In heat transfer, we don't like to write use omega. We like to use lambda, wavelengths. Right? So the relation is. Here, going back to you choose whether you choose omega or you choose lambda. Right? You need to convert this, do a conversion. So if you do lambda, I lambda is uh, really omega. You can convert your omega into lambda because, uh, say, we say 
omega equals c times k equals c 2 pi over lambda, right? So uh, is uh, say you you replace omega, but you need to be careful because uh, your integration is over d lambda. So now you have to do d omega d lambda, and this gives me. Now I write you the typical form is uh, 4 pi h bar c square and lambda fifth power exponential h bar c and uh, kb lambda t minus 1. So this is the form if you had uh, say taken uh, say a, radi a course that talk about black body radiation like it's a heat transfer, you probably seen this. And uh, typically we'll say this is a one constant, that's another constant. So uh, you write in two given constant, but those are all in terms of the fundamental physical constants, right? Okay, and you can see here this is lambda t, and in fact uh, if you normalize this by also, uh, temperature to the uh, fifth power, this is also will be a function of lambda t. So this black body radiation, Planck's law, if you plot as a function of lambda, or uh, say is here, and there's the peak here, lambda t is about the 3,000 micron Kelvin. Right? We mentioned this before, and that's say the Sun's temperature is about 6,000. That's why our eyes are sensitive because the 3,000 divided by 6,000, 0.5 micron, right? The Earth system, the 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 uh, solar system on Earth, we get used to the evolutions towards looking during the day, looking at the sun, right? If you you can imagine if there's intelligence in the other solar systems. That will be a different wavelength range, right? depends on the temperature of the sun there. OK. Right, so that's the uh, uh, black body radiation. And uh, if you go to look at the integration, right, uh, this is a, so you say here is a, you integrate omega, omega, omega square, right? And this is 0 to infinite. So if you do your integration, you can uh, say, OK, uh, because this is omega over t, right? I can get this exponential into one variable x. Right? So if I do h bar omega kbt into my x, then you say, d, uh, say omega is proportional to x, right? So omega will be proportional to x times t. So here, if I do that, this omega will give me 1t, right? This omega give me t, 2t square. This omega give me another t. So what I have, if I integrate it, I will get the u equals uh, uh, t fourth power, uh, whatever constant, right? This is a, once you convert it into intensity or inter emissive power, which is a pi times the intensity, you get the sigma t fourth power. Right? So you see all this, those were the Wynn's law, Wynn got lowery price displacement law. You go to check the history. And uh, Planck got the lowery price. And uh, uh, I don't know, Stefan, this is Stefan Borsman law. Right? Right? Those were all empirical and it came out laterally out of this. Okay? So, now uh, that's a photon, right? Let's look at the uh, next phonon. It's very similar. So, phonons. And uh, for phonons, uh, I'm going to, uh, if you recall, the typical dispersion of phonons, I have, of course, 
This is a dispersion after, transfer, uh, say, acoustic phonons. But I'm going to use the, the by model. So here is the uh, uh, frequency. Here is a wave vector pi over d, pi over a. And this is my the by model, linear, very crude. OK? And uh, this is a omega d, a real crystal is uh, isotropic. In each direction, there is a different lattice constant, right? The Dubai is actually collapsed all three polarization transverse longitudinal into one, and also make this crystal equivalently isotropic. So in fact, uh, I have to say this is my Dubai equivalent lattice constant, and uh, I need to uh, First, find out what's the equivalent lattice constant, right? And uh, if I have, uh, uh, say, n atoms in the crystal, right? And uh, in terms of each atom can do, say, if you say, OK, uh, in terms of the uh, modes, right, or uh, in terms of the um, uh, let's say the um, you have three directions, right? So you have each direction. You uh, so you essentially have three n modes. So I have three n modes in total. Right? And transverse, two transverse, one longitudinal. And uh, now I need to make the equivalent, uh, say, unicell to generate the same number of modes. So what, what does it mean? That means if I have 3n, that's the number of modes, right? And I sum up the polarization is P3, I have kx, ky, kz, that times one. I sum up each one is uh, each set of kx, ky, kz gives me one mode, and uh, that plus p polarization three, right? So uh, if you do that, and uh, you can uh, again you write it in terms of density of states. So is uh, the volume here, and uh, density of states for photon. You go to check. Is the, the di only difference from photon is I have three polarization. Here I have two polarizations. I look at that. Omega square C cubic pi square. So it's three halves. And the V cubic. And this is the by uh, velocity. And the pi square. And the D omega. OK? So this is my density of states when I convert this summation into integration. And I do d omega. So omega now, unlike light, which I integrate from 0 to infinite, now I only go from 0 to omega d. OK? Right? So it's 0 to omega d. And uh, uh, 3n divided by a at the by what by Way that's the say uh, um, you know the volume and uh, you, uh, you also know the relation between omega d right omega d is uh, the the by velocity that's the slope here times the wave vector so equals pi a d so that's a, right omega d is related to the the by velocity. <laughs> And the equivalent lattice constant, the by lattice constant. So by combining these two relation, I can find what's the corresponding lattice constant. I have here. Uh, essentially, I solve this. I get that pi a d equals six n divide by v, pi square, one-third. 
Okay, and uh, you can also say this is the byte frequency is six n v pi square one third times v d. So these are the uh, given the number of atoms per unit volume. I give you a equivalent lattice constant for the Dubai model. OK. And the rest is very similar to photon. Right now, I'm going to find out what the total energy is h omega times this Bose Einstein distribution replaced with the photon density of states integrated from 0 to omega d. Right? So it's identical. I find out that they now it's something I can measure. For Fulon, I can measure the energy. Right? So this is the UT temperature. Uh, uh, say this is small U is a capital U per unit volume and is 0 to omega d and h bar omega. Exponential h bar omega kdt minus 1. Density of states, we have 3 omega square and 2 pi square d omega. Uh, uh, v uh, cubic, right? V cubic. This is the by velocity cubic. OK? So that's my, uh, what I have here, the density of states. right? How many states? Each state that have full-on frequency omega, energy h bar omega, how many full-on in that state? Right? OK? Everything looks very similar. Differences, omega d rather than infinite. Vd, rather than speed of light. Okay. Now, uh, this is the energy per unit volume for solid. Now you can think about this is a crystal that you can measure, and when you measure, what do you measure typically for solid? You don't, huh? You 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 uh, say temperature is uh, say uh, uh, thermodynamic, right? Oh, uh, here all these are thermodynamic. But uh, you measure specific heat. You add energy. You say how much temperature rise. So the specific heat, say, per unit volume, is uh, say d o d t. Right. So you take a derivative of all this, and now so you can take a du dt. Everything is inside. Only here is the temperature, right? Uh, there could be a little bit of thermal expansion. A lattice constant could be a small function of temperature, but the main change comes from the Boson-Einstein factor here. So if I take this everything as a constant, I can do analytically my integration, uh, differentiation, and then do the integration, right? Now, let me uh, come back to here. The photon, if I do integration, is a T fourth power, right? What's a specific heat? Does, a specific, does that mean specific heat is two T cubic power? A low temperature. A low temperature is two T cubic, right? That's because when you go to very low temperature, this uh, omega d is inf effectively very large, because here this is small, so that uh, say it's like your upper limit is infinite. So at very low temperature, your specific heat is actually t cubic. It's just like photon; it's a photon gas. So if you plot the specific heat of most materials, what you find is a trend like this. Okay, eventually it goes to a constant. And the low temperature, this region is a T cubic power. Okay, a high temperature is constant. What is that constant? 
At high temperature, that's because when we go high temperature, it's no longer integration to infinite. OK? So it turns out this, if you do your integration, it goes to that constant value. And this fundamentally is uh, the equipartition theorem. Remember, we mentioned equipartition. At high temperature, each mode contributes, average speaking, one half kBT, right? Each mode, each, each freedom, if it's, the motion is quadratic, right? So uh, one half kBT. So if I think about the atom in the crystal, I have an atom in the crystal. <coughs> it vibra I say it move. It's kx, ky. I say you have one half mvx, mvy, mvz, um, mvz square, right? Each one, right? So you have three. And I have kx square, half kx square. That's another energy mode. kx square, ky square, kz square. So that's a six. Right? So at high temperature, the energy of each atom is 6 times 1 half kBT. That's the energy. Now you take a derivative to temperature, because that's specific heat, so you get a 3 kT. So this one should be 3 kB and uh, say number of atoms divided by per unit volume. Right? So this is Dulong per Taylor. Dulong per Taylor. It's an equipartition theory at a high temperature. Low temperature, you go to two cubic. That's right. So what Einstein, so the Einstein actually first proposed a model to explain specific heat of crystals. He didn't use the Dubai model. He used a constant, this omega e model. OK? The omega e, if you do that, you don't do integration, you get the density of state modes is all just, uh, I have uh, uh, um, six n modes. Just uh, the h omega times this, times six n modes. Right? So. If you do Einstein model, you integrate, uh, say uh, you, you don't integrate because of this frequency of omega uh, Einstein already. The problem is when you go to low temperature, this is exponential function. And experimentally, it was measured a cubic function, right? Cubic, rather exponential. So this is where, uh, say, it was proven that Einstein model was not correct. OK? Uh, Specific heat. Any questions? A uh, few more comments. The real crystals are neither, say, a simple Dubai or Einstein, right? If you look at dispersion, right? So uh, what typically do people do is they will measure. They will measure specific heat, and they use uh, the by temperature. So it's a kBT d equals h bar omega d, right? So you can say is that if you can fit, you measure specific heat, you fit the omega d, you divide by kB, you get uh, the equivalent the by temperature, right? So this is a, say, Td gives you the by temperature. And the by temperature, uh, 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 so you know, if you look at the, the real crystal dispersion we said before, right? And uh, you can say at a very low temperature, acoustic phonons are most important, lower energy. Once you go to higher temperature, they start to kick in. Because of the higher energy, that exponent becomes also important. right? So in fact, uh, seldom you can use just one temperature to feed that whole curve. 
so this the body temperature sometimes is a function of temperature. Okay? It's just a fitting, right? So the, the point I want to make is the integral, you can fit the integral very easily. Integral is forgiven. You made some errors, right? Integration is smudged out. If you take a derivative, so it's much more difficult to get to the agree with the experiment. So uh, it turns out many times we do model for transport properties. And later on, you'll say most transport properties are integrals. So you say, OK, this is the form. I fit the experiment. You often get a beautiful fit. Doesn't mean you get things right. So that's the, uh, what I want to, uh, to see there. Come on. OK, so this is the day uh, we, talk, we talk about photon. We talk about uh, 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 photon. And what about electrons? Right? An electron, you can again use the same strategy. Say here is the energy of the, I, I go to solve the dispersion of the electrons. And uh, I say the energy of electrons uh, of the system due to electron, a certain temperature, electron have to carry chemical potential. Right? So T and mu is summation of polarization that's a spin up, spin down. And Kx, Ky, Kz. And the electron is energy of that uh, mode. Right? I normally I don't like to use the H omega for H bar omega for electron. I just say this is energy. And then they Fermi to rock, right? This is the energy of that level. I say the energy and how many electrons on in the, at that level, say uh, at that quantum state, right? So this is the energy of the electron system, okay? And of course, you can take a derivative of this to get a specific heat. But you have one trouble. You have an extra mu there. Right? I said before, mu is close to EF. But you still have, in theory, you still have to actually determine that mu. Right? How you determine that mu is you have, for electron, you have a fixed number of, number of electron. Right? So the total number of electron you know in the system and that total number of electron, again, I do this summation. Is so each state, the average number of electron is Fermi Dirac. Right? So I have E minus mu KBT plus 1. So I have one equation here, another equation here, right? And using this equation, I can say, if you give me n, I can find mu. I substitute mu back into here, I can, which is a function of temperature. Mu is a function of temperature, right? I substitute back here. I take a derivative. Now I have one temperature here, another temperature there. So it's, a, it's a more complicated, right? But it's doable. Mathematically, I'm close to the problem. So I'm not going to do it. I just gave it. So they, you go to do the electron specific heat. You will find out electron specific heat approximately in metal is 1 half pi square n over v. That's the n is number of electrons. And uh, KBT over TRF. TF is the Fermi temperature. OK. So electron temperature, uh, specific heat, is a, a temperature, uh, is a function linearly proportional to temperature. 
And uh, they, uh, so what's the K, uh, TF? Is a KBTF equals EF, Fermi energy. OK? So that's the difference, right? Say sometimes people do model, and they will use a constant specificity for electron. You can tell them it's wrong. Because the electron, because the TF is very high, because it's a few electron volts. If it's 300 Kelvin is only 26 million electron volts, EF is typically Fermi level is a few electron volts, right? Few electrons divided by 26 million electron times 300. That's the equivalent Fermi temperature, very high temperature. So most of the time, you're in this regime. Okay, when temperature is lower than TF, you have the linear distribution. Okay. Any other any questions? I talked about. The specific heat, and uh, the other thing, uh, this is the Stefan Boltzmann law. And one, one other comment is now you can say, if you want to take a derivative of that energy of photon, you get specific heat of photon, right? We just normally do not talk about specific heat of photon. It's very low, it's hard to measure. OK? Any questions here? OK, if not, you see we, this is a, almost like a, you, I can just stop here and use this result and move on to next. It's a pretty much, you take a semester course on statistical physics. You learn only this stuff. OK, <laughs> one lecture. OK, we have the, what? We have the three or four lecture on solid state and two lecture on quantum, one lecture on statistical physics. You learn everything. OK. But I don't want to let you go, because you go talk to others, you may still appear ignorant. Yes? I think uh, metal and semiconductor should have very different uh, electronic specificity because of the band gap. So uh, uh, very, very good. Yeah, good question. Yes. I, uh, uh, so when you talk about, you go to a semiconductor, again, you have to use this to find the Fermi level, and then go to that, you can still do the same. Um, actually, uh, I do not know whether semiconductor is linear. It's a good question to check. Yeah, I do not know. Uh, I, I, I haven't uh, really checked that myself. OK. Uh, so of course, what you learned is the case uh, Fermi Dirac, Bose-Einstein, right? And together, if you see the, the second lecture, we learn Maxwell distribution. That's the classical Boltzmann limit, right? And uh, uh, but see, there are some uh, really uh, very commonly used terminology in, statistic, in statistical thermodynamics. So I don't want to. So that I'm not going to test you, right? And we we normally do. Sorry, we normally do not use it. Um, uh, so I will not, uh, I will not, uh, I need to turn this off. <laughs> Forgot it this time. So um, what uh, I'm going to use to, to really uh, uh, do next is to give you a little bit uh, introduction to the basic language bit. What people talk in statistical physics, right? It's actually a very beautiful treatment. So what we hear uh, is the fundamentals, I would say. In statistic physics. OK, so what are the fundamental concepts? Yes? I just have a quick question back to them. Uh -huh. It's rather than it being, it being the, um, the potential, the, the energy at a, of, as in of omega, right. like a specific omega, isn't it like this expected value? Like because this is a, uh, well, 
this is a, the, uh, let's say I have, let's say you saw quantum mechanics, so you know the, uh, you know the energy level, say let's suppose you have, uh, say photon emitted at a certain frequency, right? So that's the energy of this, uh, say, uh, mode, electromagnetic mode. So if I have standing wave here, that's an a electromagnetic mode, right? And the, uh, so one photon with that mode that has a corresponding frequency, the energy is h omega. Right, but that has a quantity. This. Because you're talking about like a probability and then like a density. Right, right. Uh, so what you say is the probable, what are you asking why this is not a probable energy density? Yeah. It is a probable energy density. It's just normally the deviation is really, really, really small. So you measure it there. You can always measure some fluctuations, right? And uh, but say uh, this is a uh, that deviation from that fluctuation will be very very small. In fact, that's a very interesting topic itself. Okay, yeah. So uh, the uh, concept we want to say is uh, in when we do statistics, we want to do. Time average, right? So I can't, normally I cannot measure a very far, uh, say let's suppose uh, um, I have the internal energy, right? It's a fluctuating over time. And uh, I have to do, if I do error, any measurement, I have to over a certain time, I will integrate that, uh, say, uh, quantity over this time and get the time average. That's what I can measure. Right. Nobody can say I'm going to measure really uh, instantaneous energy there. So that's a time average of any quantity, right? And uh, this is a, a system I have, and I measure the average quantity. But in statistics, uh, it's hard to do time treatment. The time treatment, uh, you, 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 you need to read the chapter 10 of my book. I don't know whether I can get there. Okay? That's another direction when you do statistics, is do time treatment, time averaging. Right? But say, uh, uh, what uh, uh, say people normally do is rather than doing time element, uh, treatment, they'll look at the ensemble, is uh, like more doing space treatment. Right? What's an ensemble? So, uh, ensemble is just a collection of uh, quantum state. Right? Let's say uh, this system, right, is a macroscopic system. I, if I suppose I can solve quantum mechanics. Right? I can find the all quantum state of this system. Right? The total number, total quantum state, quantum states, let's say total number is omega. Right? So in, when I construct an ensemble, I look at the, each quantum state is one system. Each of this as a one system. Okay, you can you can see that's a huge huge number, right? And the, in each of this quantum state, this quantity has certain value, right? I may have a quantum state where, uh, say, uh, all I uh, say all uh, say all there's uh, no particle there, right? That in that case the is the, the energy of that whole system in that quantum state is zero. Okay, so I each of this I have uh, say this quantity, and then what I do is uh, the ensemble average is what's the probability? So now I'm saying the probability of observing this quantum state is p. So what I do is xi pi and sum up that I sum up all quantum state in this ensemble. Okay? 
So here I have time average. Here is the ensemble average. So in statistical treatment, is mostly treating this ensemble average. And it turns out there are different, different probability distribution depends on whether this ensemble, the system I'm treating is either constant temperature or constant energy, whether it's a closed system or whether it's an open system. OK, so those are different ensembles. And the, where we're going in the, at the beginning of the next lecture, I'm going to discuss this ensemble. It's, we start with uh, the basic ensemble microcanonical. It's a closed system, uh, constant energy. And going to a system that's a constant temperature. When a system is constant temperature, it means it can actually exchange it with the surrounding the energy to maintain the constant temperature, but closed. And then we go to the next is if I have particle exchange with the surrounding, mass transfer, right? Then I have grand canonical. So you go from Gibbs probability to Boltzmann factor. No, say, uh, no, Boltzmann, Boltzmann principle to Boltzmann factor to Gibbs factor with this different ensemble treatment, OK? So uh, that's where I, I just want to see where we're going. But I want to use uh, some time to look at the, do a little bit surfing, right? So, Okay, so what I'm going to, first let's look at the lens of states. OK, so let's look at the full on density of states. So even though I, uh, everything looked very, uh, uh, say, we, we give an analytic expression. And if you really look at the full on photon, it's omega square, right? We just used it. And you see here, it's, uh, not exactly omega square. Say so this region, very low frequency region, that's a linear. That's, the, uh, that's where it looks more omega square. Right? Once you go to after phonons, right, transverse, non-trivial, after phonon, you say it's a lot longer. That, that say omega square is a lot longer the picture. And uh, when we calculate energy, remember we're integrating over density of states Bose Einstein distribution, right? We are using our parabola, parabolic distribution to represent this function. How good it is. You should not feel very uncomfortable, right? But uh, people use it. OK? And uh, a different material system. So, so what, what, what is uh, so here is again, this is where maybe the by approximation is fine. And this, those are the typical when you have different direction, different, uh, say, transverse optic phonon, uh, say, uh, acoustic phonon, and you get here the optic phonons. Okay? Right. So people done a lot of, this is a, uh, you, can, you can do mostly by computation. You can also do uh, some, uh, uh, so you use a neutron to measure it. Electron then self states, right? Uh, where, so here, what, it, what this look, this is like quantum well we discussed, right? It's a staircases. And this is a probably quantum wires. There are spikes, OK? Dots is the more isolated lines. And that's the uh, typical parabolic approximation we use, right? 
And uh, uh, you have to look at, uh, uh, let's say, uh, where is your band, uh, say, where is your EF? So electron band structure. Let's say, all oh, for uh, what? Silicon again? OK, so, so first you have to uh, go to look at the, where is the Fermi level fell to the top, right? And, uh, uh, and then say, for transport, what do you really care? If you look at the electron transport, you should look at the where, what, what's the density of state near the Fermi level. Because that's where KBT we said, right? It's, if it's too far away, this region will most likely uh, it's not uh, involved in transfer. They are field the electron. No electron can move there. So you look at the, what's interesting is really what's the density of states near the Fermi level. And uh, I'll give you uh, another well, resonant levels. Let's look at this. Okay, what is this? So sometimes, right, uh, uh, what people say, okay, if you dope a semiconductor, you put a, uh, say, uh, uh, say E minus EF, so zero is the EF, EF here, right? And uh, you put the atom in, say you put some impurity atoms, and they could create some sharp features in the density of states. And those sharp feature could be very interesting for transport because uh, if you have sharp feature, it means there could be a lot of charge there, right? And uh, uh, the velocity of this uh, carrier is uh, the slope, okay? It's the, if I have, right? So it's the slope, group velocity is the slope of this lines, the dispersion lines. So, um, uh, so typically, uh, in, in uh, for example, do, when we do thermoelectrics, we like those to have the, those sharp features because uh, I say I like to have the uh, to have a lot of charge, so that I can have high electric conductivity. The so density of states times the right the number density is say F times D, and if the D is large. My, uh, I could uh, potentially get a very high uh, lumber density. And then say, of course, I have to care about the other properties, so I have to align my Fermi level. And uh, how I align my Fermi level is by controlling the doping. So I can uh, change the doping and change that uh, Fermi level. So uh, I thought uh, uh, I'll stop here. Any questions? I was looking at the papers, and uh, I could go to, if you go to literature physics today for, uh, uh, website, for example, you'll see people are do, doing cold atoms. What are cold atoms mean? You know it will be related to Boson-Einstein condensation. A lot of talks on cold atoms. Okay.